you were once a prisoner. Held captive by fear. By prejudice. By sin. Anger. Addiction. But here's the thing. That prison no longer exists. Those walls have been torn down. What once held you captive now lays in ruins. You have been set free, redeemed, renewed, and God continues creating by bringing your soul to life. Where there was a prison, there is now a playground. Where there was despair, we find a wellspring of joy. Where there was death, we are given life. Christ has set us free. So live in that freedom. Lift your voice. Clap your hands. Find your joy. And set it free. For you, are a prisoner no longer. Amen. Welcome this morning to our July 4th service. We're so glad you chose to be here with us this morning. I'm John Presco, the small group and involvement minister here at Northside, and it's a privilege and honor to be here with you this morning. I want to ask a question of everyone first. How many of you have shot some fireworks or have been to a firework display or show so far? Let me see the hands. Yep, a few, yep, yep, yep. Okay, a few of you in the house. I've done the same thing. I got invited uh, with many others to Chris and Jenny Brewer Blast last Sunday. They had their property all set up. They had a food truck out. They had all kinds of games. Uh, a little bit of rain came, so it kind of messed up some of the fireworks. We saw a few as they got started, but they were, there was a whole show set to computers and all this computer stuff. I don't know how any of that works, but the moisture messed it up. So we see a few go off, and then we hear this voice as we're all sitting there in anticipation. It's not going to work. Come back tomorrow night. And so we're looking around like, are you coming back? Yeah, I think I'm coming back. I'm, it's supposed to be really good. Let's come back. So we went back Monday night. The kids played in the creek again. We played some more games. And I think there were more people there on Monday night than there were on Sunday night. Chris probably invited some more. And we saw this incredible firework show. In fact, it was something I, I think I've never experienced before, just how close we were. And one was right above our heads. It was amazing. It was unbelievable. Uh, maybe you can come next year because it was pretty awesome. But the thing that stood out to me as I was preparing a message for July 4 Sunday and a message on freedom was that Chris had mowed into the hillside in his property, hopefully you can see it on this picture, the word freedom. It was so cool. I asked him about it. He said, yeah, I just kind of decided to do that. I'm like, did you map it all out? Did you place markers? Nope, just got the zero turn out and just started, looked like it would fit and Sure enough, it fit, the M's on there at the end and everything, it looks pretty awesome. So today, I hope you get to enjoy and experience uh, some fireworks, but we're gonna talk about freedom first here this morning. And I want you to think about this question. I'm gonna ask you a few questions this morning, but I want you to think about this first one. What does freedom really mean? And I've got somebody special that's going to help us this morning with that. It's Lightning McQueen from the movie Cars. He's going to give us a little example. If you've, seen, if you've not seen the movie, he was a famous racing car on his way to the next big race in California, and he'd kind of done some stuff and, and gotten kaputs with his team and his driver, and he ends up out of the truck, and he ends up lost, and he makes a mess in Radiator Springs, and in the midst of stumbling into town, he wrecks a road and wrecks a part of the city. So he gets arrested, thrown in the impound lot, and sentenced to community service in which he's required to repair the main street in town. So we're gonna watch a short clip of Lightning McQueen getting started with his community service. So watch this on the videos. I'm here by sentencing you to community service. You're gonna fix the road under my supervision. What? This place is crazy. Man, I know this might be a bad time right now, but uh, you owe me $32,000 in legal fees. What? 
So we're gonna hit you up to Sweet Bessie and you're gonna pull her nice. You gotta be kidding me. You start there where the road begins. You finish down there where the road ends. Holy shoot! Whoa, 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 how long is this gonna take? Well, fella does it right, should take him about five days. Five days? But I should be in California schmoozing Dynaco right now. Then if I were you, I'd quit yapping and start working. Hook him up, Mater. Okie dokie. Freedom! Maybe I should have uh, hooked him up to Bessie and then, uh, then took the boot off. <laughs> And goodbye, Bessie. California, here I go! Yeah! Oh, feel that wind! Yes! No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Out of gas? How can I be out of gas? <laughs> Boy, we ain't as dumb as you think we are. But, 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 how, uh, how did you... Hey, siphoned your gas while you were passed out? Ka-chow! A little sign of freedom. Did you, did you catch what um, Lightning McQueen says after Mater took off the boot, right? He's heading off and he says, freedom. He thinks he's free, but he's not. In fact, he gets more community service. That's what happens to us sometimes. I don't know about you, but what does freedom mean to you personally? What does it mean to you personally? Now, the dictionary says freedom is the power or the right to act, speak, or think as one wants without his hindrance or restraint. Now, I don't know for, uh, for you, but freedom might mean uh, just to get a couple of days off, right? To have the weekend, whatever your weekend looks like, just to, to get away from the job and to have some freedom. Maybe for some of you, it's that vacation you're looking forward to, or maybe you just got back from a vacation and you kind of can't wait to go on the next one and just get some freedom where you don't have to think about work or think about the things of life. Uh, for many students, this summer has been some freedom, right? From your schedule and your test and studies and all the things that school means. It could mean freedom from debt, the things that have financially held you back. And that can come from some things we do ourselves, but oftentimes it can even come from outside sources when medical things happen to us and just that freedom lifts that weight from us. Some of us are, have dealt with some health issues or maybe you're dealing with one now and just helping even a family member through that and the, the freedom uh, of not having to stress about that or not have to worry about that once good news comes or you give that over to Christ. And all of us have been dealing with the pandemic. We've gotten what we might call some freedom as we've kind of, the, they've lifted some of the need for masks as many more have gotten vaccinated. Um, I started giving plasma weekly after I got COVID-19 myself. Wanted to give it to help those um, that needed it while I had the antibodies and have kept giving it. I went Monday and for the first time there were signs that said, you don't have to wear a mask. I was so excited, I didn't have to wear a mask anymore. They didn't have to check my temperature or do all that kind of stuff. And uh, then I went back Friday and all the signs were back. We were back to wearing masks and I asked the lady, I'm like, well, what happened? She goes, well, it lasted about four hours. You came in that four hour window, corporate brought it back. I guess there's a new variant that's causing uh, some COVID to come back. And I know for some of you, you're still wearing them at work um, and having to uh, deal with that. Some of you experienced some freedom while your kids went to camp, right? I know my wife did as uh, Brenda, or Becca and I went to camp. She kind of got the home and some peace and quiet. And for you that have lots of kids, you know, maybe some went and there wasn't as much fighting and all that going on. You got a little bit of freedom. I hope you, hopefully your kids learned about some freedom in Christ while they were there. And so exciting to see Addie after a week of camp get baptized today. But this day, right, this day, the 4th of July is all about freedom. It's our annual celebration of freedom, of nationhood, the beginning of independence from Great Britain. And so I bought, brought behind us, I didn't buy these, I brought behind us our flags. And just to remind us, because both of these flags stand for freedom. The American flag has been around since 1775 in the beginning of our freedom as a nation. Little tidbit about it, it's changed 28 times. It now has 50 stars on it for the 50 states and that's 
been the longest running flag at like 61 years since Hawaii was added. The Christian flag began in 1907 when Charles C. Overton, a Sunday school teacher in Brooklyn, New York, he was getting ready for a big Sunday school kickoff and he had a special speaker coming in and for some reason the speaker didn't show up or couldn't, couldn't come. And so he was stuck with impromptu coming up with a message. And he looked over and he saw the American flag and the different colors and he started to explain about that and think about, well, what if Christians had a flag and what would it look like and what would it stand for? And so a few years later, him and another guy came up with the Christian flag. And it's interesting to me that when you look at the meaning of the colors, they're almost identical. Both red, white, and blue flags. And what they mean are the same. Red for sacrifice, blue for loyalty and faithfulness, and white standing for peace. And as the Christian flag standing also for purity. Both of these flags stand for freedom. Think about that word freedom. It really is never free is it? Somebody paid a price for that freedom. In fact, blood was shed for both of these flags and the freedom that comes with them. I really feel that's what makes the American flag so emotional for many people. You know, my grandpa served 30 years. He's buried in Arlington Cemetery. He got the Bronze Star, was in three different wars. I know uh, some of you, even on Brenda's side, had lost family members in a war. So it, it gets more personal when we talk about the freedom of this flag and the people that have sacrificed for this country. But what I want to talk about this morning, as Christians, what does freedom look like for us? What does freedom mean to you spiritually? You see, Jesus' purpose was all about freedom. In the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he goes into the synagogue in Nazareth and he begins reading from the scroll of Isaiah. And here's what he reads in Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. That's in Luke chapter 4. Jesus reads it. He's reading a prophecy shared about himself hundreds of years earlier by Isaiah. Jesus has come with this message of freedom. It's his purpose. It's why he came to this earth as a man. Later, Jesus Jesus says in John chapter 8, verses 34 and 36, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son, that's in capitals in the Bible, that's speaking of him, if the son sets you free, you are truly free. I don't know about you, but I'm happy to be a part of that family. I want you a part of that family. I want everybody to be a part of that family and no longer live as a slave to sin. But guess what? All all of us have sinned because Romans 3.23 tells us everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. We all miss the mark when it comes to living a life for him and sin. And sin makes us into slaves. It separates us from God the Father. And if we're separated from God, that's the same thing, really, as not even knowing him. It's as if we do not know the master, we cannot be saved from the bondage of sin and be invited into that family of God. Sin ultimately leads to spiritual death and being separated from God for all eternity. But I got good news. It comes later in Romans. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. He says again, for the wages of sin is death, but... The free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Then Galatians says in chapter 3, verse 13, when he, Jesus, was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. And Peter even says in chapter 2 of 1 Peter, verse 24, he says, he, Jesus, personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. That's good news this morning, church, isn't it? Amen? That is great news. It's fantastic news. We have a gift that is free, that is going to help us break free from that bondage of sin, that enslavement to sin, and become a part of the family of God. But John, how do I do that? I'm so glad you asked. 
because when Peter preached his great sermon, they asked him the same thing. And he says in Acts 2, verses 38 through 39, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. Give them up and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you to your children and to those far away, all who have been called the Lord, who have called the Lord our God. All you have to do is call on him. All you have to do is accept his free gift, and he wants to add you to the family. Be baptized in those waters for the forgiveness of your, of your sins. I want to tell you here this morning that if you choose to believe and accept Jesus for what he did on the cross for you, where he shed his blood for your sins, if you choose to repent of your sins and turn to God, you will be saved from that spiritual death. You will become a part of the family of God. Wouldn't that be the greatest 4th of July ever? Wouldn't that be something to truly celebrate about? Not just freedom for our country, but freedom from sin. And I just want to implore to you today, if you've not made that decision, do it today. It'll be the best day of the rest of your life. It'll change you for eternity. It'll change your family's legacy for eternity. Jesus has died for your sins. He is offering this free gift of eternal life. And I want you to know there is nothing that you have done that he cannot forgive. Nothing. You just have to choose him. It's really simple. Here at Northside, you can go to www.northsidechristianchurch.net forward slash decision. Whether you're watching online or you're sitting in here right now, just get out your phone. If you want to talk about this, if you've never made this decision, or maybe you've made it before and you need to come back to the family of God, I want you to get online and do that right now. And someone, I, I will probably be the person that's calling you this week to have that conversation. But I also want you to know, if you're in the room with us right here, right over there by the baptistry decision point, I'm going to be going out that, those doors right after I preach, and anybody can come and we can have, start that conversation right here this morning. Now, some of you might be thinking, wow, we're already to decision point. The sermon's over, right? Not so quick. Hold on. I got a little bit more. I got another question for you. What do we do as those who are already part of the family? What does freedom mean for us now that we have already become a part of the family? We're believers. What is your freedom in Christ for? Well, Wayne said Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. I also want to look at verses 13 and 14 because I think it clearly tells us what our freedom is for. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 says, So Christ has truly set us free. Then in verse 13, it says, Now make sure that you stay free. And don't get tied up again in slavery to the law, for you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom, here it is, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, as we know, it's one thing to be set free from prison or slavery, but it's quite another to decide what to do with your freedom when you've got it, right? This is the issue that all of us face when we're set free from bondage. Shall I use my newfound freedom to go and commit more offenses, or should I change the way that I have been living? The fact that you are free to move about and do whatever you please doesn't really mean it's the right thing to do. It certainly uh, didn't do any good for Lightning McQueen, right? He took off and all he got was more community service. He didn't really escape through his freedom. Our Christian freedom is not restricted, is not an unrestrained permission to do whatever we please. To put it another way, freedom from bondage, if it is to be any good, must be matched by a sense of freedom for a particular purpose. Let me say that again. Freedom from bondage if it is to be any good, must be matched by a sense of freedom for a particular purpose. Christ's sacrifice has set us free so that we can live in God's presence in a brand new way. He has set us free for a purpose, for a reason. The Galatians give you a little context of what was going on when Paul wrote this. They were caught up in adding works from the law to grace in order to be saved or to maintain their salvation. But Paul tells them this, and he's telling us the same thing. 
Paul doesn't want the Galatians to go from legalism to license. He teaches that God called us to liberty so that we could love and not lust. Everybody say love. That's what it's all about. That we love one another. And since you're free, Paul teaches, don't serve yourself. Don't indulge in the sinful nature. Don't let your freedom become a beachhead for your own fleshly desires. You're free from the law. You're free from sin. That means you are free for God. And furthermore, free to love your neighbor. You are free to be led by the Spirit into this new way of life. You see, freedom in Christ is serving one another in love. Say that to your neighbor. Serve one another in love. Now, some of you, if you're sitting by yourself, you've got to find some neighbors so that you can, you know, might, I might call on you to say something to your neighbor. Now, this is a particular kind of love that sets us free to serve. It's that unconditional love demonstrated on the cross by Jesus Christ. There is no way that our human strength, that we would ever subject ourselves to one another. We, we would just be selfish unless we knew first that God loved us and accepted us unconditionally. Let me give you an example of that. I heard a story of a minister who, when he first started dating his wife, soon to be wife, but when he first started dating her, there were a couple things that he hated to do on dates. He, he just hated it. He hated bowling and he hated skating. Like, why do you take a cannonball, drill some holes in it, put on slick shoes, throw it down a slick curved piece of wood trying to knock down some pins? He just thought it was stupid. Why would you ever do that? Or why do you put on your feet stationary wheels with the intention on slick wood to go in a circle, right? Why don't the wheels move with you to go around that circle? He just thought both those things were stupid. And sure enough, he goes up to the door, knocks on the door for the first time, taking his wife out. And he says, uh, what would you like to do on this date? And she says, well, let's go bowling. And he says, fantastic. I would love to. He hated bowling, but yet he loved it with her, right? And then the second time, he really didn't learn. He walked back up for the second date, knocked on the door and said, what would you like to do tonight? And she's like, let's go skating. And he's like, that sounds awful. Inside, he was saying that. But he went and did it. He skated around in circles on those stationary wheels with the person that he was falling in love with. Think about that. It's the way it is with Christ. We love and serve because Christ loves us. And we're willing to do that because of his love for us. And now that we know we don't have to earn God's love, now that we know we don't have to prove ourselves, we're free to humble ourselves and to become slaves to one another. God set us free from the pressure to perform. God set us free from the law so that we could freely and without fear submit ourselves to one another, putting their interests above our own. And he showed us the example of that, didn't he? Let's look at John chapter 13, verses 4 through 15, and here's a story about Jesus serving himself. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never, ever wash my feet. Peter always took things to the, to the highest hill. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Here he goes, Simon Peter exclaims, then wash my hands and wash my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. But Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash, except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you, for Jesus knew who would betray him. This is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I am doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that is what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. See, in that time where they wore sandals and walked around in the dusty streets and the, 
and, and, and were dirty all over on their feet, their bodies might be clean, but from walking all over in the dirty streets, their feet were dirty. So as I walked in, typically the lowest person in the house, often a slave, would wash their feet anytime they would come into the house. And Jesus, being the Lord, being their teacher, being their rabbi, he humbled himself. He took the lowest job, even that of a slave, and did the dirty job, did the hard work, and told them, that's what this is all about. You too are gonna go and do the same thing. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of hard work and dirty jobs and kind of some of those tasks that are really difficult, I think about moving people, right? Like there's big boxes, they're heavy, there's all this crazy furniture that we gotta get through, odd doors or little doors around all these corners, and then there's always stairs and stairs and seems like, oh, I'm moving to the seventh floor of this apartment. There's, you know, and it's hard for us to get a lot of people to help and to do that, and sometimes that's one of those jobs that we look at that's kind of tough and it's hard work and, and it's maybe one of those dirty jobs. It's hot, we're all sweating. But I got a story about a family, the Owens family from here in our church, that did exactly that when they were on vacation. They loved their neighbor. Watch this video. Well, hey guys, my name is Aaron, and this is my nephew, Talon. And uh, John wanted us to share just a quick story um, that we experienced while we were on vacation as a family about a month ago. We were out on vacation in Utah, and uh, we kind of have a tradition as a family to find a local church uh, wherever we're at. So it could be another country or another state. If we're there on a Sunday, we just try to find a local church. So um, Taylor's mom, my sister, uh, Amy, uh, found a local church and there wasn't many because we're in Utah. So a lot of Mormon churches are around, but uh, we did find a Christian church and we have a very large group. There's, there's about 30 of us with all the kids. And so we kind of descended upon this small little church. And I think we doubled the uh, congregation size yeah. that we were there. So we took them by surprise, but it was really cool. It was a cool experience just to join them um, in worship and automatically have that connection with people just uh, with the freedom that we have through Christ. And they got to a point where they were kind of doing some prayer requests and um, I'll let Taylor kind of talk about that. Uh, around the time prayer requests came up, the pastor's wife came up and said there was a family that needed help moving. And so I sort of felt called to like, we need to go do that. We need to go take on that. So uh, intermission came up and I went over to mom and was like, hey, I feel like we really need to do this. And she's like, all right, I'll work it out. So I just walked back and then Aaron came up and was like, I th feel like we should do this too. And then we just sort of put it all together. Mm -hmm. It was it was cool how God was kind of working through several you know, people in our family just feeling like, hey, I know we're on vacation, but you know, we've got a big group of people. We didn't have any set plans the next couple of days. And we were just, hey, let's let's take advantage of this. Let's go move. So um, the next day we coordinated with um, the lady uh, was actually a real estate agent helping this lady move. And they had allotted, I think, three days to help this lady move all of her stuff out. So we get there the next day and there's the house and two barns like full of stuff. And so we just jumped in and got to work, moving stuff out, throwing stuff away. I mean, all of the kids were there. They were tag teaming, carrying boxes around. And it was that, just- That it, was the most fun right there. Yeah. All with being with all the cousins, mm -hmm. just Get, having fun. Getting to experience that as a family and you know, just making it a fun experience. So we worked for a couple hours. We actually got everything done instead of taking three days, you know, knocked it all out and one of the coolest experiences was, you know, at the end, we asked if we could talk with the seller and um, if we could pray with her. And she was not a believer. Um, she was a little bit hesitant. She didn't want us to pray for her to, you know, I think she mentioned too, she didn't want us to pray for her to go to a place she didn't want to go and things like that. And, and we just said, hey, no, we just want to pray that you'll have safe travels to, um, you know, where you're moving to. And um, so we all just surrounded her and prayed over her. Um, and it was a cool, it was a really cool experience to see that. And, you know, no matter what, that we could just, you know, shine God's light wherever we're at. Isn't that great? I love that. 
I love the stories of our families loving their neighbors. And what I love about it is that um, Aaron was kind of telling me that, you know, they went in and doubled this church. And when this gal made this request for somebody that didn't even go to their church, they looked around and Aaron was like, most of them were older. We're like, I I don't know if they're going to be able to do this. And they felt this calling. And I love that Taylor was the one that felt the Holy Spirit speaking and just said, "We, we should do this. We can do this as a family. And it even said it was fun, right, to do it together with cousins. Now, I want to tell you a couple things. Um, number one, uh, it doesn't, I didn't tell you that story for you to feel guilty, that you don't go to church on vacation, okay? I didn't tell you for that reason. I, I mean, I kind of did so that you would feel a little bit of guilt, right? But just be open to always loving your neighbor, whatever God throws at you, listen to the Holy Spirit. I also didn't share that story with you so that next time you move, you would call the Owens family. I mean, they did get it done in three hours instead of three days, but... Um, you know, there, there are many here that I'm sure would help you now that we've shared that story. But I thank you for sharing that story from the Owens family. It, I hope it motivates all of us because that's what love does. Love motivates us to be all that God wants us to be. And it's not so much our love for God that is motivating us. It's his love for us, right? As we know from scriptures, we love only because he first loved us. His love is always constant. Please know this. God loves you unconditionally. You understand what that means, right? God doesn't say, I'll love you if. I'll love you when. God always loves you. In fact, he accepts you and he affirms you right now just as you are because God has the ability to see you in Christ. He can see us in Christ, and he loves you. I want you to believe that. He is proud of you, and he loves you dearly. Believe that God cannot love you any more or any less than he loves you right now, no matter what you do. Accept his unconditional love. Just accept it. Just take it in. No matter what Satan's putting in your head, no matter what you've dealt with in the past, even if you've come to Christ before and you need to come back to the family of God, Just accept it right now for yourself. And through the power of Jesus Christ, you will grow in yourself a desire to love others, to love your neighbor as yourself. In fact, Galatians goes on, chapter 5, and says, as the Spirit grows in us, we gain all these other fruits, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. They all come through the Spirit. What I love about telling that story is that it really hits some of the things Wayne and I talk about in Discover Northside about how we can give back as a church, how we can give back as a church member. And it's really doing the four T's because Wayne starts everything with the same letter. It's giving your time, your treasure, your talent, and your testimony. I'm glad he does that because then I can remember it too. Your time, your talent, your treasure, and your testimony. And really, I love the story because the Owens family did that. They took time out of their vacation. They used their talents, right? They were able to carry and to do stuff that maybe some of the other church couldn't do. Uh, Somebody paid for the vacation, so they used some of their treasure, actually, to serve someone else, and then they shared their testimony. That's what God is calling us to do. So right now in our service, as we do every week, we want to give you the opportunity to share some of your treasure, to give back what God has given you, to bless. He's blessed you, now bless others. And you can give back to the ministry that's happening here at Northside, and we in turn want to do ministry here and in our community and all over the world with what you give of your tithe. So you'll see on the screen some numbers where you can text to give, you can go online to give. There's clear boxes in the back if you want to give right here uh, in, in the service. But I wanna encourage you, love one another. And if you have not accepted Christ's love for you yet, do that today, whether you're here in the room or you're watching online, make that decision. Northsidechristianchurch.net forward slash decision. Can, will you allow me to pray with you? Father God, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to hear your word today of what you have done for us on the cross, how you've taken away our sin so that we can be a part of your family. And I pray that anybody who has not done that yet and, and is hearing this message today would just be overwhelmed with your love and knowing that they can make that decision right now that you freely give to them this incredible gift. Our Father, that person that has strayed away from you and needs to come back to the family of God, I just pray 
that they will just surrender themselves to you today. Father, help us all as believers in you who have chosen to be a part of your family of God just to love our neighbor well, even on vacation, even on a holiday. Help us to listen to your spirit, look for opportunities to love each other well. Father, thank you for loving us so well, giving the the greatest gift you could ever give, your son in our place for our sin. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. If you have a decision to make this morning, you can join me in Decision Point right now or after the service. Can we stand together?